In today's project video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this pair of contemporary candlesticks. Hi, I'm John Clothier and welcome to my wood turning channel. So today I'm going to be making a couple of matching contemporary candlesticks from this 18 inch by 3 inch length of sycamore. So I've got mounted between centres and what I need to do first is make the whole thing round and then we can work out a chucking point and split the wood in two. So I'm going to get my roughing gouge now and round it off. So now that the wood is all round, I'm going to need to find the centre point to know where to do the two dovetails. So I've got my tape measure here and I'm going to measure this and it's uh, it's not quite 19 inches. So obviously nine and a quarter, uh, sorry nine and a half would take us to, uh, to 19. So let's mark nine and a half. So I'm going to measure 10 millimetres back from that. And that is where I want to put my dovetails. So I need to make that section there down to about 55 millimeters, then put my dovetail on, one that way and one that way. Then we can take it to the bandsaw and cut it through the middle. Right, so let's take this over to the bandsaw and cut it along this line. Then I'll bring one section back over and mount it in the chuck. Right, so we've got a piece of wood now mounted in the chuck and I brought the tailstock back up just to kind of get it centered again, uh, but also just to offer a little bit of support while I can. So I need to true up this edge now. Uh, so let's get that trued up and then we can measure out the size that we want for the candlestick. Right, so we've got a nice flat edge to work from now. So let's measure down eight inches. Okay, so now I know where the bottom's going to be, so that's where it's going to be parted off later. And we've got the top nice and flat, so that gives us eight inches. Now these are the inserts we're going to be using at the top, little glass ones. And obviously at the moment they're, they're quite big, uh, look quite small compared to the wood. Now that's okay, we could go with that and go for that as the design. But I think I just want to have it a little bit narrower at the top. These are about 50 mil, and this is 75. So that gives me a little bit of wriggle, wiggle room. So I'm not going to take down too much, but I'll just take a little bit off of that. But what I wanted to do is to come down, go in, and then flare back out again. Now, I'm quite happy with the width of the bottom here. Obviously, it needs a bit of sanding, but that's okay. So I'm going to go with the rule of thirds on this. Now, a third of eight inches is 2.6, roughly. So let's go with just about two and a half. So if we say five, which is here, so I'm going to go into there and then back out. Let's get that rough shaped out, and then we can do the drilling for the uh, tea light holder. Right, so that's the shape done. Now I'm going to sand it from 80 grit through to 400 grit. Okay, so that's it all sanded. Now, for those of you who know me pretty well, you will know that I'm unlikely to leave that there. And you're right, I'm going to apply some colour. So I'm going to start off with the black from the intrinsic range. Just get a bit on the tissue. And just rub it in. Okay, so now that's dry, I need to sand most of that off. So I'm gonna go back up three grits and work my way back down. Okay, so that's most of the black sanded away and you can see what we've got left with is this really patchy, blotted, mottled looking effect, which is brilliant. 
So now what I want to do is I'm going to take some purple and colour the whole thing with that. Okay, so that was the black applied um, with the tissue, and you should have seen that when I applied the purple, I just had the lathe spinning and just sprayed it on, just to get a really good even coat. I left that to dry, and then sanded back, not as much as I sanded back with the black, but sanded back the purple. And that's revealed some more of the lighter wood again. And with that, I'm gonna use some of the crimson colors, plum, uh, sorry, purple. The intrinsic purple is a lot darker than the crimson purple, so that gives me a little bit of layering and just helps to give a little bit of extra character to the wood. Right, so that's dry, so let's give it the sanding sealer. So next step is to drill out the center for the, or the recess for the glass tea light. Now I've measured it, it's about 25 millimeters deep, and it's about 50 millimeter, uh, yeah, about 50 millimeters across. So I've got a 48 millimeter drill, which is the closest I've got. So what I'm gonna to have to do is to drill it out with that down to the depth, and then just go along with my, uh, with a tool, probably a parting tool or a skew or something, just to take the last millimeter out. You may be wondering why I didn't do that before the coloring. Um, quite simply, because I thought it might be nice to leave it with a clean wood underneath the glass tea light holder. So when you're looking at it, you can see natural wood through it. Anyway, let's get that drilled out. Right, that's the hole drilled, so now I'm just gonna give a bit of a sand on the inside. So that's the inside sanded, and I've also applied a good couple of coats of sanding sealer. So now I'm just gonna give the whole thing a little bit of a light rub with a Nyweb pad, and then it'll be time to apply some wax. Nyweb pad done, and I've decided I'm actually gonna give it a coat of melamine lacquer first before I apply some wax. Mostly because obviously this is gonna be a candle holder, and it's got a good, heat resistance to it, so hopefully that will help protect the decoration. Right, so I need to leave that to dry. I'm gonna leave that overnight. It doesn't need that long, but I'm going in for my dinner. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so now all I need to do is apply a good coat of wax and I'm going to use the Hampton Sheen High Gloss. Right, so now I need to part it off. Now I want to make it sure that these are both the same size, so I'm going to measure with a ruler now down to eight inches and that's where I'll put a little pencil mark and I know that that's where I want to part it off to. Okay, so that's parted off. All I need to do now is just take off the little nubbing at the bottom, which I've just done with the skew, and give it a bit of a sand. So I've got one of these larger uh, sanding discs that I use with my uh, orbital sander, and it's just 180 grit. I'm gonna put it on something flat, place this down on top, and just gently move it around, trying to keep it as flat as possible. Okay, so that's the bottom all tidied up. All that's left to do now is to put the little glass insert in. And there we go, there's our finished candlestick. So I'm gonna to need to make the other one now. We can do exactly the same process. Of course, paying attention to the sizes and the dimensions to make sure that they look like a pair. So when I've done that, we'll come back and look on both of them. And there's the finished candlestick, complete with glass insert in the top. Obviously got my logo on the bottom. And yeah, as you can see as I rotate it, the purple, the different layers of purple and the black really shows up and it makes it look stunning. Really pleased with that. So as I said, this was a pair. So there's the first one and there's the other one. So yeah, very pleased with that. They both look pretty similar, not exact, but fairly similar. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If it's your first time here, 
I invite you to click on the subscribe button and click on that notification bell so you can get notified of any future updates. Bye for now.